Uh, a lot happened when I was 13. When I was 13, I actually was outed uh, by a family member of mine. Yeah. We were sitting uh, at a dinner table, and this person found explicit content on my computer. I was uh -huh. 13 and exploring, you know, the world, yeah. let's call yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then this person took my computer, turned it around to my whole family, mm -hmm. and that's how I was forced uh, out. Mm -hmm. and, and how did your mom react to that moment? She seemed shocked. Everybody seemed shocked. But what happened was she then kind of brought me outside and I felt started berating me. Like, mm. And when I say that, I mean asking a lot of questions that at 13 you're not prepared to answer. Mm. And I feel that if I was straight and the same thing happened, you know, people say things all the time, oh, give kids magazines and all this sort of stuff. And I feel like it was because I was gay, not because of the content, that this became such a big deal mm -hmm. and such an eruption. It kind of was the first time I felt unprotected by my mom in mm -hmm. this whole thing. And I feel like as adults, you have the ability to take these situations and reframe the shame is maybe what I, how I would describe it. Yeah. And it really, it, you know, that was, that's, that's was the beginning of a series of events that left me feeling that same way. Was your relationship with your mom good before that? Yeah, it, me and my mom were like best of friends. My father died when I was three, so it was really me and my mom that were left with each other. I feel like it completely reframed our, our relationship mm -hmm. because a lot of what happened afterwards, the, you know, sometimes like the name calling and, and some of the other things that would happen really just left me feeling like parentless mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Got it. And what was it like living in the house afterwards, after this moment? Yeah. It was difficult because I feel like my mom harbored a lot of resentment towards me. Uh -huh. And so the way it enacted itself was me feeling very isolated and alone. And then I think it just, again, it kind of went on. I was, I actually, when I went to college for my, the first week I was in college, I was actually sexually assaulted while I was there. Whoa. So, you know, then my mom, so it, it, you know, it, it, you, I would say it gets better, but you know, it's, it's yeah. always something that sticks yeah. with you. Um, but when that happened and I was thinking of who to call. I actually called my aunt and I didn't call my mom because mm. I felt like she would again blame this, you know, these tropes of gay men as promiscuous and like that kind of mentality. Do you feel like she resents you? I think my mom mourns a version of our life that she wishes she would have. Mm. So how did you cope with this isolation in that time? I, you know, some people turn to all kinds of things. For me, it was really turning to school. I went to Brown, I went to Harvard, I worked on Wall Street. Uh -huh. I did all these things. So it, thank you, thank you. But for me, you, you know, single? Because I got a couple of homeboys I can hook you up with, okay? <laughs> That's all the stuff that happened. But for me, that comes with a lot of hurt because that was my reaction to feeling like I was so alone. It was trying to overcompensate in these other ways because when it was scholastic achievement, Everything was great. My mom would be happy. You know, when I graduated, I was going to Brown. Big celebration party, but it's always about those things. And it always loops back to this idea of, like, my mom being this great mom and the, all these accomplishments. And then it just minimizes my experience, which was really a flawed childhood, yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. Listen, you preach it to the choir. Why do you think I got a talk show? <laughs> sorry. I tell, sorry. No, you preach it to the choir. I tell people all the time. People are like, what propels me? I'm like, trauma. <laughs> yeah, trauma. Let it's me tell real. You, you have a daddy that said, who only applauds you when you're successful. You're going to find out how to be <laughs> successful because you're searching for that love. You know, we can joke about it now because we made it, but it, we've all done that. We respond to, like the love we didn't get in a certain way. And I'm like, for me, it was the same thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, so you don't want to acknowledge my, me being gay. You don't want to acknowledge these things I'm going through, but you do acknowledge when I get a good grade mm -hmm. or when I achieve or when something goes well. So let me keep achieving to make, to make me feel like I'm getting the love that I should have just gotten unconditionally. Absolutely. So I understand that. I get, I get that. Um, Thank you for validating that. Yeah, I get it. I understand it. You're welcome. So what do you need from your mom today? I need my mom to stop focusing on making herself feel better about the mother she was and focus on validating and affirming my feelings and where I stand so I can heal. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like what happens is every time we engage in these conversations, it flips to, well, I was crying too. I was sad too. I was this too. And sometimes I talk to my mom about this concept of like emotional immaturity, which mm -hmm. is a very new term that I've kind of started. But it's like my mom's inability to to just accept and stand in who she was, mm -hmm. limits her from validating who I am and where I am and what happened to me, you know? Got it. Well, um, thank you for being clear about that. Let's hear what your mother has to say about this. So everyone, please welcome TJ to the show.
Hi, TJ. You look absolutely beautiful. How are you it's doing? It's a pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as How well. You? I'm doing okay, man. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Awesome. Um, so, how do you feel about what was said? Whew. Where do I start? Yes. Okay, so, when I had just came home from work, and his brother and his, his family were at the house, we were in the process of getting ready to celebrate Dakota's 13th birthday. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walked in the house, the computer was turned around, and it was gay porn. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. And then, too, in all honesty, I'm a baby boomer. That's not what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, it, if it was, then it was talked about behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't something that we just openly, ex you know, my parents didn't accept it. It was just shocking. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really know what to do. I couldn't stop crying mm -hmm. because what I knew was that my son was a black man. And not just a black man, but now a black gay man. I knew what society would do to him. Mm -hmm. Just eat him up and spit him up. I don't have a problem with sexuality. It's just that I don't want it for him. You, you're, you, oh, you're, you are entitled to feel how you feel and your feelings are valid for you and I accept that. My difficulty is that we're having a conversation about we're here to talk about the heal these, these elements, right? Mm -hmm. And it always shifts back to me, 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 me with my mom. Mm -hmm. I felt this way. What did I experience? I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And she said, the world was gonna chew you up and spit you out. And okay. look at me today, okay. it didn't. So can you just accept that maybe you okay. have the wrong view and validate that that- I, and, you, and I will accept it. I own it. And I hear what you're saying. And I apologize. And I've been apologizing for years. Do you think he's forgiven you? No. You flipped our parent-child relationship on its head when you said the things you said to me when I was that age. What did, you, well, what did well, your mother say to you? Let's just say I raised you to be a man and not gay. I'll just say, you know, let's just, I'll, I'll put it like that. Was she saying uh, the F word? It wasn't the F word, but variations. She you know, these, very... you know, this is, this is, you know, these sort of things, they, they sting you. I apologize. I, I accept that, but I, you've said you apologize for that before too, but then still sit here and say, well, I can't imagine ever talking to my mom like this. Well. You're, you're, it's not a normal parent-child dynamic, not to mention that because you were a single mom, I had to take on a lot more as a child. And so our whole relationship is more of a partnership than a parentship, is what I would say. Do you feel like it's more of a partnership? Well, when his dad passed at three, I told him, I said, we're partners. I said, mm -hmm. and let me tell you why we're partners. I said, because what I need you to do is I need you to empower your brain. I didn't want him going down the same path his dad went down. So my whole thing was to throw everything I had behind him mm -hmm. so that he could be intelligent, smart, exposing him to everything I could in the world. Do you feel like you treated him differently? I did. Mm -hmm. I own that. I did. Dakota, in my opinion, he robbed me of a daughter-in-law that I could torture, mm -hmm. that I could literally torture. That's, that is... And, 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 I know, I know, but that's just how I am, Dakota. I'm just being honest with you. And I told you that he brought me of a, a daughter-in-law of the, the, the typical, the typical family. You know, um, grandkids. And I know he said he's, he's gonna have grandkids, and God knows I can't wait. You already make my family, that's for the future for me, feel like it's less than. No, Dakota. It does. Dakota, it's not less than. Because it's you're not, saying Dakota, it's not, not less than. That is her. No, it's because not. Because you're saying, Rob, and I know that you're, it's minimizing. And I, I am whole. I will have a family that is whole. <laughs> Nothing about me or the family that I have is anything less than some idea that you have in your mind about what it should be. Dakota, I apologize. I can't apologize. You keep I apologizing and you keep saying the same stuff. So it's, it's, what is the point of apologizing? Because, what is the because point I of just want us to move forward. That's well, all I want. I think you, I just want us to move forward. It's really hard to move forward with the things that you say. It's really hard to move forward. Do you understand how the words that you're saying, how they're, why they're triggering him and hurting him? I do. Okay. I do. So from your perspective, why do you think you're saying that? Because I want to know. I, I, that's what I've always said. You know, it's, it's not that I'm trying to trigger him or hurt him because yeah, I'm one. not. I'm not trying to do that, mm -hmm. but it's just the way I was raised and what I know. Yeah. 
It's not, you know, when you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I never even heard of emotional immaturity. I never even heard of some of these terms. Mm -hmm. Until reason, like, what the heck is that hell? Mm -hmm. You know? I and think so, it's important that I, that we come here, and the reason why we're here is because I think, I don't, and I don't feel like you're alone. I think there are other kids and families out there with the same exact issues. I think it's just not talked about a lot. It's a lot to come talk about this here. No, I, appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate both of your bravery because it, the truth of the matter is, is that it is. There's two different generations that we're looking at here who are speaking and saying that we love each other and we want to support each other, but there's a generation that didn't have the knowledge that many of us have. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Um, TJ, I want you to get this. I'm gonna use the language you've said back to you so you can understand that when you say things to him, it robs him of his emotions. It robs him of his dreams. Do you see that? Because like you saying like- I do now. You do now. Because like I understand. And Not I can, just I today. Can, I'm talking about maybe period. a couple of weeks ago. Got it, you started getting it. I started it. To getting it. Yeah, I got it. Because the thing is, is that, and I appreciate you expressing that point for me, and I understand how it triggered you. And I understand what you're saying you need to your mom. You need her to, I want you to tell her just clearly one more time what you need. I need you to stop trying to reframe your motherhood in my adolescence and pu you know, puberty times, except that it was flawed, and stop trying to make excuses for it and for yourself in this active journey towards us moving forward. Moments like what just happened, put us back. Can you take us back? So can you do that? Can you? I can. You can. So from now on, the past, no more like, I'm going to justify, I'm going to explain, I'm just going to acknowledge it was not right. I, I can definitely do that. OK. I can, I can definitely, can because I'm, I'm here to move forward, not mm -hmm. to go back. Yeah. I, Same. I got, Same. I got to tell you something, though. Same. Yeah. I got to. Hold on, I gotta tell you something though. Um, amidst the hurt, which is very valid, I have to acknowledge you actually have a mother who's actually trying to grow. Agreed. And Agreed. one of the things that I think when it comes to this generations, different generations, is that we want them to grow at our pace. Mm. And we don't realize that she has to grow at her pace. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that as she's making this commitment, I would ask you to make a commitment mm to give her a little bit more grace in her growth. I receive that, I'll do that. I, I receive that. Listen, I, I'm, I hope you feel heard. I do. Do you feel as if this was a first step in y'all getting somewhere? I absolutely do, and good. I thank you for it. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you feel good? Absolutely, good, thank good, you so good. much. I wish y'all the best of luck. There's a lot of love here. Thank you. yeah, you're welcome. Everyone, thanks for being with us. Make sure to come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all.